Good afternoon, this is Rich Nelson with Allendale. Kind of the wrap-up comments here today is Wednesday, January 12th, 2010. Before we get to all the excitement as far as the grains today, we'll point out that the over, that the uh, outside markets did have some effect here on us today. The fact that crude oil uh, up 78 cents while the U.S. dollar fell almost the entire day, uh, steadily lower throughout the entire day. Last trade I have is down 91. That certainly provided a, an underlying tone of light support here for the uh, for the grains. Overall, big day for the grains. Corn up 26 and a quarter cents in the last trade. That's not a settlement. Beans up 61 and a quarter, and wheat up 14 and a half. As far as the corn itself, this is both a new high for this March corn. At the same time, this is also the new highest close for this uptrend right now, too. Soybeans, the same story. New high for soybeans and new highest close for March soybeans here as well. We cannot say the same for wheat. It's still in mostly a sideways type of range right now. Big moves as far as USDA's reports. Once you get down to the changes that they made, actually the biggest effects were the production revisions. The fact that they revised the U.S. Uh, the corn crop down by 93 million, they revised the soybean crop down by 46 million bushels here. That was those are the biggest drivers today of why ending stocks fell. Corn stocks uh, down to 745 million bushels. Uh, the key thing we watch for is actually stocks to usage, the best measure of tightness of supply. And that number is down to 5.5%. This is the lowest stocks to use since June of 2008. In other words, at the most bullish point of the entire 2008 rally, we have the exact same tightness of supplies. So keep that in mind. Um, Pretty interesting fact there, and, and uh, the only thing keeping us from those prices that we had in 2008 was this crude oil. The fact we had crude hitting 147 for some highs back in 2008, quite a bit different from the current situation. But as far as the tightness of supply, the fundamental reason why we have this bullish rally, this is as tight as we had in 2008. Keep this in mind here. Uh, another thing we can point out, which we were happy to see, on the grain stocks reports, generally kind of a, a moderate number that people don't really pay attention to too much, but these were the ones which provided all the crazy uh, moves each of these past three quarters, the quarterly grain stock numbers. USD did not fudge with the numbers too much here at all. They kind of fit with what the trade was looking for. So the bottom line I'm saying is there is no crazy feed use number or feed use uh, basically kind of made up number that USD threw up, uh, threw the threw, uh, threw with this trade here this time here. So overall, big numbers overall. Uh, we've got uh, new corn price targets as far as our new upside price targets. Please uh, feel free to give us a call here in Allendale. Talk to any of the brokers to get a hold of those actual numbers, uh, and uh, we'll be happy to, help, happy to talk to you about these things here. Last thing to speak of, Argentine farmers, uh, at the exact same time as all this stuff is going out, uh, Argentine farmers have announced a one-week strike from uh, grain sales. They went out sell corn or soybeans to, uh, to exporters for one full week. They're doing this to protest the government's still very stringent controls on exports. Keep in mind, uh, one example here, uh, they say that they have low domestic wheat prices, uh, low domestic prices, while world prices are high, but they cannot take advantage of that because they're limited by exports through the government controls. So big news as far as that side, uh, overall big excitement across the, across the board. Uh, for wheat, uh, we can point out the winter wheat numbers. The increase in winter wheat plantings is actually a moderate 3.7 million uh, million acres. That was below the average guess here too. So every single number USDA threw at uh, threw at us here today was lower than the average guess. Very uh, very interesting point on that end. Uh, livestock big day today too. Cattle up a buck seventy five. We have all kinds of uh, more or less a plethora of small factors all kind of combi uh, combining together with this cattle issue. Uh, we have, of course, the snows we had in Nebraska and Kansas two days ago. That's one issue here we can point to. Uh, also, we've got these uh, Australian floods. The fact that Queensland is a major beef-producing province of, of uh, Australia, and those floods may inhibit some, uh, some transportation issues here. Uh, in other words, exports. Uh, we will note that one Newswire reporter told us here today that actually Australia is on holiday for this entire week, so the floods shouldn't actually be an issue. But... Bottom line is for what the trade wants to trade. That's what you. That's what they're looking at here. Uh, so big news on the cattle in here. Uh, in fact, box beef was up 98 for choice and 101 for select. So certainly new highs and new high close for the Feb cattle contract. Exciting numbers here too. Over on the hogs, the biggest uh, driver today, of course, was the, was the corn. The fact that with these uh, high corn costs, we're looking at the chance that producers could limit uh, short-term production. 
uh, by uh, by going ahead and, and marketing hogs at, at a lighter weight now. Secondary factor, of course, they could go ahead and lower their breeding herd because they're concerned about uh, uh, about uh, high corn costs. That's another issue there to speak of. But overall, hogs continue their upturn as well. This is a new high close for the February hog contract. Keep in mind, this is not a new uh, this is not a new high yet for the hogs here just yet. So overall, across the board, uh, a renewed focus on commodities being a commodity bullish story, and it looks like uh, that's set to set to uh, stay in place here for a little time uh, in the future right now as well. So all kinds of exciting things going on for us. More importantly, what does this mean for your price? What does this mean for your operation if you're a producer or a, or a buyer of commodity products? Or uh, what does this mean as far as your trading account? What type of positions should be uh, should you be going on and going after right now with these markets? You can feel free to give us a call here at Allendale. Talk to any of the brokers who answer the phone. 1-800-262-7538. More importantly, find out what these mean to you as far as the long-term picture. You can get that picture at our, out, uh, at our uh, Outlook conference here. It's going to be on January 21st and 22nd, so just right around the corner. You need to give us a call here as soon as possible to make sure you get your own seat locked in. Because, as I said, time is getting very close and very uh, uh, almost too close to call right now to get your tickets here. So please feel, gre- feel free to give us a call here. We want to get you in, get you in these seats, get you uh, the information you need to make your operation profitable for this next year here. So keep, that, keep in mind we have that going on as well. Uh, you can also take a look at more information, allendale-inc.com. Get more information on this end and also see a full agenda of who's speaking and what are the key topics. A lot of exciting stuff you need to get a hold of here. Once again, 1-800-262-7538. This is Rich Nelson. Have a great trading day and a great trading week.